Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to learn about some properties of acids and bases and before we start talking about properties of acids and bases, let's take a look at some examples of some acids and bases. We know that from prior experience that when we bite into a lemon, lemons are going to have a sour taste. Why do lemons have a sour taste? Because they are made up of citric acid and acids have a sour taste. If we take a look at this dishwashing washing soap, this dishwashing soap has a slippery feel to it because of something in there called glycerol. And so dishwashing soap is a base. Bases are slippery. If we take a look right here at this bleach, bleach is a base. And we use this bleach here to clean our bathroom, to clean our kitchen sinks. Uh, and various other things, right? If we take a look at this battery right here, this battery is made up of sulfuric acid or battery acid, okay? And if we take a look over here, this guy is working out and after he's done working out, he might experience some soreness in his muscles due to the buildup of lactic acid in them. And last but not least, when we wash our hands with soap, we are washing our hands primarily with sodium hydroxide, which is going to be a base. So some examples of acids and bases that you've uh, had experience with before. Now let's take a look at some properties of acids and bases next. And so what are some properties of acids? Well, we know from prior experience that acids have a sour taste. For example, if you bite into a lemon, that lemon is going to have a sour taste due to the citric acid that is in it. We also know that acids conduct electricity, therefore they make good electrolytes. We know also that acids are corrosive. We know that acids can be proton donors. We know that acids have a pH of less than seven on the pH scale. We also know that acids react with metals to produce hydrogen gas. Acids will also turn an indicator called methyl orange to red and we'll talk about that later on in this little unit. We also know that acids will turn blue litmus paper to red. Acids neutralize bases producing salt and water according to the Arrhenius model of acids and bases. Acids also produce H plus ions when dissolved in solution. Acids last but not least are going to react with carbonates to produce salt, water, and carbon dioxide. So these are some properties of acids and bases that you might or might not be familiar with. And if you are unfamiliar with some of these properties, we will learn about every one of these properties in our little acids and bases unit. But now let's take a look at some properties of bases and then take a look at strong acids versus weak acids and strong acids versus weak bases. And so what are some properties of bases? Well, it says right here that bases have a bitter taste. If you bite into a bar of soap, when you were a kid, maybe your mom washed your mouth out with soap. If you said a naughty word, well, that soap is going to have a bitter taste. We also know from prior experience that uh, bases have a tendency to be slippery. If you've ever dropped the soap in the shower before, that's because bases are slippery and soap is primarily a base or is going to be a base. We know that bases are going to be proton acceptors according to the brunstead lowry model of acids and bases we'll learn later on. Take a look at this. Bases are going to turn methyl orange to yellow. Bases have a pH greater than 7. Bases turn red litmus paper blue. Bases neutralize acids producing salt and water according to the Arrhenius model of acids and bases. Bases also will turn phenolphthalein to purple. Another type of indicator we'll talk about this unit. And last but not least, bases are going to produce OH- ions when dissolved in solution according to the Arrhenius model of acids and bases. And so now let's take a look at some examples of strong acids and weak acids and then take a look at some examples of strong bases and weak bases. And so what are strong acids and what are weak acids? Well, it says right here that a strong acid is an acid in which one of its hydrogen ions slash protons dissociates completely in water. And weak acids do not fully dissociate in water. And an acid is usually considered to be weak if less than 5% of its hydrogen ions dissociate. So what does this mean? Well, let's take a look right here. We have a beaker of water. And what we're going to do is we're going to place 10 moles of HCl in this beaker of water. And when we do that, what ends up happening 
is that this 10 moles of HCl is going to dissociate completely. It's going to break apart and form 10 moles of H plus and 10 moles of Cl minus here and no moles of HCl. So this entire 10 moles of HCl is going to dissociate and break apart into 10 moles of H plus and 10 moles of Cl minus. So because of this, HCl or hydrochloric acid is considered to be a strong acid. And so there are about seven strong acids in chemistry and all other acids are going to be weak acids. And so if you simply memorize the list of seven strong acids, you should be good. The seven strong acids are hydrochloric acid or HCl, hydrobromic acid or HBr, hydroiodic acid or simply HI, nitric acid, which is HNO3, chloric acid, which is HClO3, perchloric acid, which is HCl4, and sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4. So everything else is going to be a weak acid. So what is a weak acid? Well, let's suppose we have 10 moles of this stuff right here, uh, HC2H3O2, and we put this in water right here. Well, as we see right here, this is not going to completely dissociate. In fact, if we take a look, if we put 10 moles of this stuff in here, we're going to end up with 9.986 moles of this substance still floating around in this water here. It is not going to dissociate. It is not going to break apart. And we're only going to end up with about 0.0134 moles of H plus and 0.0134 moles of C2H3O2. And so understand that concept that a strong acid is going to completely dissociate and break apart where a weak acid is not going to completely dissociate. In fact, it's not going to dissociate much, of, much at all. And so we're going to have relatively low amounts of H plus ions floating around in this weak acid and a relatively high amount of uh, H plus ions floating around in this strong acid right here. So now let's take a look at strong bases versus weak bases. And so it says right here that a strong base is a base that fully dissociates in water. And so if we take a look once again, let's suppose we have 10 moles of this substance here, calcium hydroxide. And when we put this in water, it's going to completely dissociate. And so if this completely dissociates, what we're going to end up with in this water with is 10 moles of calcium ions and 20 moles of OH minus ions floating around in this water right here. And so we're not going to have any moles of calcium hydroxide because it's going to completely dissociate. It's going to completely break apart. And so calcium hydroxide here is considered a strong base for this reason. And so here's a list of strong bases that you need to memorize and everything else is a weak base. Make sure you memorize lithium hydroxide or LiOH, sodium hydroxide or NaOH, potassium hydroxide or KOH, rubidium hydroxide, RBOH, cesium hydroxide and CSOH and calcium hydroxide as your strong bases as well as strontium hydroxide and barium hydroxide as well. So these are going to be your strong bases and everything else is going to end up being a weak base. And if we take a look at a weak base, let's suppose we have 10 moles of magnesium hydroxide. Well, if we put this in water here, this substance right here is slightly soluble in water and so it's not completely soluble in water not all of this is going to even dissolve and so if not all of this dissolves then you're not going to have very many OH minus ions floating around in this solution right here and <clears throat> this is going to end up being a weak base so understand that concept where strong bases completely dissociate in water and weak bases do not fully dissociate in water and you're going to have a relatively low amount of OH minus ions that are floating around in this in this beaker of water right here. All right, so that's properties of acids and bases. Understand what some of those properties of acids and bases are. Make sure you understand what how strong acids versus weak acids work and strong bases versus weak bases. And if you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner that's going to subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments or questions down in the comment section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.